Good morning and welcome to New Beginnings Christian Center's YouTube channel. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And you know what? Something is so wonderful about that verse of scripture. It doesn't say this is the Monday that the Lord has made or this is the Tuesday that the Lord has made. It says this is the day that the Lord has made. No matter where you're watching from, no matter when you're watching, this is still the day that the Lord has made. And we can make that decision to rejoice and be glad in it today. And you know what? Today there is cause to rejoice because the Lord is still speaking to his people, just like he did from Genesis to Revelation. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is speaking and God has a now word just for you. And what does that mean, a now word? It means a word that God has released from heaven for right now, for this day, for you, for whoever is watching right now, let me tell you, you are here on purpose, for a purpose, because God intends to give you some revelation today. As always, we wanna say thank you for jumping on. We are so grateful that you are watching. We encourage you to like this video, hit that subscribe button, share this with your friends and your family, your colleagues, your neighbors, because everybody needs to hear what the Lord is saying today. As always, we want to also give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. The Bible says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house. And what you do when you give to this ministry is you help our reach to increase. So if you want to become a part of this ministry, you can follow any of the options down at the bottom of the screen, or you can text the word give to the number one, 214-949-8858. And not only will your seed bring forth a harvest, but you sowing into this ministry helps us to reach more people around the world with the word of God. We are so thankful for the opportunity to do that. And we're so thankful that you are reaching out and taking that opportunity as well. Thank you once again for joining us. And without any further ado, we are going to make way for the word today. We have a powerful message from our apostle, Rick Jackson. We are so excited to hear what the Lord has for us today. So without any further ado, let's prep our hearts and our minds for the word. If you will pray with me, Father, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, that you set us here on purpose, for a purpose, and that you intend to pour into us, God. Give us an understanding heart to hear the word and to hear exactly how it applies to our life. God, give us wisdom to put this word into action so that it does not fall to the ground, O Lord, but it reaps a harvest in our life and in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. If you are ready for this word, I encourage you to get your pen, get your paper, get ready to receive because God has something to give you today. Without any further ado, Apostle, we turn this over to you. Good morning. Once again, this is Sunday. I've said this before, but it's amazing to me how that these days go by so fast. It just seemed like day before yesterday was Monday. Now here it is, Sunday morning. But I wanna thank you for allowing me to come into your home or wherever you may be listening at this particular time, giving me the privilege to bring a now word from Almighty God. And so I hope you're ready. I hope you have your Bibles open. I hope you have a pen and paper and you're ready to take notes as we go back into God's word. God does have a now word for us here this morning. And so, like Jesus has always encouraged us, and I have always said this, especially when I was teaching Bible studies, going into homes and teaching Bible studies, one of the main things that I would say is that when you open the Word of God, open your heart. You can't be closed mind, but you have to be ready to receive whatever God has and so I want to encourage every one of us here this morning to, as we open God's word, open your heart and receive what God has. Now we're going to go to three different places in scripture that I believe that is very, very important. First of all, we're going to go to Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10. 
we will once again be reading out of the message or the voice Bible. Psalms 46 and 10. Then we will travel on over to Numbers 23 and 19. And then we will stop at Exodus chapter 16, reading verse 15 through 20. But for right now, the basis of our scripture, we are going to go to Psalms 46 and verse 10. It says this, Be still, be calm, see, and understand I am the true God. Now when, this is something that I believe is very important. When God tells us to see, He is telling us, I want you to look at what I'm looking at. I want you to come into one with me. I don't want you to look at something else other than what I am looking at. So he's looking for agreement. That's what we're finding here. God is looking for agreement. But I want to read it again in our hearing. He says, he starts off, Be still, be calm, see and understand I am the true God. Now, that those two words at the beginning of this verse is very important. Be still. Be still. You want to take note of that. Now, we are going to go to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 23, reading verse 19. I have quoted this many, many times, but it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Old Testament. Really, I should, I, I should say it's one of my favorite scriptures throughout the whole entire Bible. And it says, God is not a man. He doesn't lie. God isn't the son of man who wants to take back what he said or say something and not follow through or speak and not act on it. You need to write that down. You see, you have heard me say behind this, this black desk here, numerous times you ought to write that down or you ought to underline that. If you were to look at my Bible, it looks like a coloring book because there are certain verses of scripture that God has really highlighted in my spirit. And so therefore, I make a special note that when I am reading God's word and I happen to come across that, or God leads me back to it, then it sticks out like a sore thumb. It jumps out at me. God is not a man. I want you to pay attention to this. He doesn't lie. As we all know, the scriptures tells us that it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. His holiness, his integrity, who he is will not allow him to lie. God isn't the son of man to want to take back what he said or say something and not follow through or speak and not act on it. That's very powerful there. Somebody needs to go back and reread that again. Somebody that I am talking to right now, you need to underline that. You need to get that in your spirit. You are to speak that every single day this coming week, that when you get up sometime during the day, you go back to Numbers 23 and 19, and you read it again on a Monday. You read it again on a Tuesday. You read it again on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You get it in your spirit that, once again, God is not a man that he doesn't lie. God isn't the son of man to want to take back what he said or say something and not follow through or speak and not act on it. Now, with that said, we are going to go to Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 16. And we're going to begin reading with verse 15. The people of Israel went out to examine it. They had never seen anything quite like it. That really got a hold of me when I read that once again, and I realized that I had underlined it. They had never seen anything quite like that before. We are living in a time to where I do believe that 
especially kingdom citizens, especially those that are chasing after God, that are hungry to be in his presence, that want to go deeper into revelation, into who he is, his character. God, and here's the deal. God says that God showed Israel, watch this now, or he showed Moses his ways, and he showed Israel his acts. So what does that mean? God showed Moses his ways. In other words, he realized that Moses was very uh, intuitive. He realized that Moses wanted a deeper understanding of who God was. And so God began to explain to Moses, the reason that I do this is because of this. The reason that I've said that is because of this. And so I do believe in these last days that those of us that are chasing after God, those of us that have sold out to Jesus, that we are going to experience things that we've never seen before. We're going to experience things in God. We're going to experience the miraculous. And I want to stop right here and I want to encourage you to believe that it is for you, to believe that you can experience the miraculous, to believe that God wants to give you, he wants to show you, he wants to introduce to you the miraculous. You can experience it. All you have to do is just believe God for it. Believe God for it. The scriptures tells us, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those, watch this now, that diligently seek him. There is a reward for those that chase after God. There is a reward those that hunger for more of God. And I pray this morning that I am speaking to people that have a hunger to go after God like never before. Now, let's continue. They said, what is it? The people didn't have a clue what this strange substance was. It is the bread which the eternal has given you to eat. This is what Moses is saying. Gather only as much as you should eat by yourselves. Pick up two quarts of bread for each person who lives in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some people gathered a lot, others gathered less. When they used a two-quart jar to measure it, the one who had gathered a lot didn't have more than he needed, and the one who gathered less had just what he needed. Miraculously, each person and each family, regardless of how much they gathered, had exactly what they needed. Now, this is, here comes an instruction, a divine instruction that God has told Moses to tell Israel concerning manna. Don't try to keep any of it until the morning. Either eat it all or throw it away. Did you hear what he just said? Don't try to keep any of it until the morning. Either eat it all or throw it away. But some people ignored Moses and tried to keep some of it until the next morning. Overnight, it became wormy and started to have a dreadful smell. Moses became furious with, with them because they had disobeyed God's instruction. Now, if I was to give this a title, it would be Loosen Your Grip. Loosen your grip. Now, there are a number of scriptures that talks about trusting in God. I have always believed that the closer that you get to know somebody, the more you come to trust them. And the more that you get closer to God, the more that you fall in love with him, then you get to a place, God brings you to a place to where 
you understand you can fully trust him, that you don't have to question anything concerning his character, that you don't have to be concerned questioning anything concerning his word. And so I wrote down a number of scriptures that talks about trusting God. Psalms 20 and 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Psalms 40 and 4. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Notice that word blessed, one of the major Hebrew meanings of blessed is fortunate. Fortunate is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in me alone. God will be his confidence. Proverbs 28 and 25. But when a person trusts in God, he is sure to prosper. Isaiah 46 and 3. You will keep the peace, a perfect peace for all who trust in you. Isaiah 12 and 2, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. That word afraid there means not to be startled by sudden alarm. So we could put it like this, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be startled by sudden alarm. Psalms 28 and 7, the eternal is the source of my strength and the shield that guards me when I learn to rest and truly trust in him. John 14 and 1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's what Jesus said. That word trouble there means do not let your hearts be concerned or do not let your hearts be unsettled. Do not let your hearts be ill at ease. Do not let your hearts be distressed. Don't come unglued. Oh, I want to stop right here. I feel the presence of God on me right now. That God is already speaking to us. That yes, we all understand we live in crazy times. Crazy times. There are people right now that are weighted down with all kinds of worry and, and confusion and stress. There are people that have lost their jobs. There are people right now that, as the old saying goes, is robbing Peter to pay Paul, that they are worrying about how they're going to make the next paycheck or how they're going to pay this or how they are going to pay that. But the very first thing that Jesus told his disciples, and he's telling us in John, St. John 14 and 1, do not let your hearts be concerned. Do not let your hearts be unsettled. Do not let your hearts be ill at ease. Do not let your hearts be distressed. And don't become unplugged. God goes on to say in the verse, Believe in me. Believe in me. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have not I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Or don't lose confidence. Or don't become pessimistic. Or don't become hopeless. So that's what God was telling Joshua. And he's telling us Again, today, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Don't lose confidence. Don't become pessimistic. Don't lose or don't become hopeless. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. And my God will meet all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Now, I want to begin as we dig further into don't loosen your grip. And here's the thing about human nature. 
Human nature is always wanting to control things. That it is a natural response for human nature to want to always control things. When we feel in control, we feel secure. But there is a downside of always wanting to be in control. We will find out it's our own insecurity that controls us. Think about that. It is our own insecurity that controls us. You see, when Israel, when they were on their 40-year wilderness wandering, God told them he would give them manna. But it was only enough for each day. God set up a test to see if they viewed their trust in him as being risky. I want to say that again. God set up a test to see if they viewed their trust in him as being risky. Now, I wrote down in my notes, because when I, I got to that point, I said, well, what does the word risky mean? It means full of failure. It means loss. It means touch and go. It also means unpredictable. It also means insecure. Insecure. And so, once again, God set up a test to see if they viewed their trust in him as being risky or being unpredictable. I don't know whether I can trust you or not. You see, in Exodus 16 and 19, God's, div God's divine provision had one condition. No hoarding. No hoarding. God said that they were not to keep manna for the next day. But some of the Israelites thought of it, that it was too risky. They didn't obey or trust God. And let me just say this. Trust and obey go hand in hand. We cannot trust God without first being obedient. They wouldn't let go of the need of control. That's what some of those Israelites did. They would not let go of their need of control because they were thinking it's too risky. It's too, God's too unpredictable. That was their mind. But the next morning, those that hoard, those that got more than what God had told Moses to tell them to get, the next morning, the manna was completely destroyed. It was spoiled. God chose to make his people live in a daily dependence on him. A daily dependence on him. You see, the wilderness was a way for God to teach them to live in utter dependence on him. In other words, let me put it like this. Open hands of trust. Open hands of trust. It's like... When somebody uh, is in a holdup and I have heard it say, stick up your hands. And so when somebody has been in a holdup and they, they have a gun pointing at them, they'll throw their hands up like this because it's their way of letting the individual know they are not going to resist. They are going to be compliable. You see, the Israelites puts back some Anna because they were not sure if God would come through. They were not sure if God would come through. They couldn't let go and trust him completely. So they devised a plan B by getting more than what God had told Moses to tell them to get. But I want to stop right here and say that there is nothing, there is nothing risky about trusting God. Nothing risky about trusting God. You see, when Israel came out of Egypt, the Bible says that there was a mixed multitude that followed with them. And that mixed multitude was the Gentiles. 
But yet when you start studying about the mixed multitude, they infiltrated within the tribe of the Israelites. And the Bible tells us, you find it when you really dig it out, that a lot of trouble came from the mixed multitude. A lot of doubt, a lot of mistrust came from the mixed multitude. And let me just say that when you come to a place, I've learned this by experience, when you come to a place that you tell your Lord that you are going to fully trust in him with every fiber within your soul, the enemy is going to set out to bring people into your life that is going to try to discourage you. They will not, watch this, they will not have the same mindset as you. That's why it's very important that when you start wanting to trust God, when you're praying, and I have taught this before, when you are praying for God to answer in some particular way, it is imperative, it is so important for you to gather people around you that have the same mindset that will come in harmony with you. That's why the Lord said, if two or three shall agree as touching any one thing that they shall ask on earth, it shall be done. It shall be done. You see, last year, God moved upon me to teach about that, that God's word is our governmental order, our covenant, that God's word is government. It is sealed in heaven. And so here's the thing, that when somebody comes to you and they say, I'm going to come into agreement and I am going to believe God, that he's going to answer what you're believing for. Then in the realm of the spirit, and I don't have time to go through it all over again, but in the realm of the spirit, they sign a spiritual contract of agreement. And the scripture says that what is what takes place in the realm of the spirit now takes place in the realm of the natural. I'll say it again. What takes place in the realm of the spiritual now is transferred in the realm of the natural. Jesus, when he prayed, he said this, that what is happening in heaven will be on earth. What is happening in heaven, that was one of his prayers, his main prayers. Thy will be done as it is in heaven on earth. So it is the will of God what is taking place in heaven to be manifest on this earth. And as kingdom citizens, it is so imperative that we understand spiritual governmental rights. Because when we understand that God's word is government, that's why it says he cannot deny himself. And when we understand this, then it ought to eliminate all kinds of doubt, all kinds of fear, all kinds of apprehension. You see, what we speak, that's why the Bible says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I have said this before, but you see, I prayed before I came on the air. I prayed, God, if I don't have something in my notes that you know is important for me to say, then move upon me to say it. And he is moving upon me now to ask you a question. What have you been speaking lately? What has been coming out of your mouth? Are you faced with a situation that has caused you to be pessimistic? You see, watch this. It is the language of the enemy. Jesus is in the wilderness, fasting and praying for 40 days and nights. When the enemy comes to him, when Satan comes to him, he says this. If thou be the son of God, 
if thou be the Son of God. And so we understand that he was the very first one to speak that word if. If in a, in a negative tone. Question God's validity. Question God's identity. And so it is extremely important that we as kingdom citizens watch, especially when we are trying to believe God for something, especially when we're wanting to see the miraculous. It is so imperative that we watch what we say. We watch what comes out of our mouth. That is, I cannot say that enough. So I ask you again, what has been coming out of your mouth? What have you been speaking? Or what have you been hearing? What have you been listening to? Because when you are trying to come into agreement with the word of God, you got to get to a place to where you shut out all negativity. You shut it out. It's like when Dr. Mike Simons, he said when he was here many years ago, he just was, they were, him and his wife were evangelizing. God was using them in a great way. They were having phenomenal revivals, seeing the miraculous everywhere that they went. And all of a sudden he started getting sick and he just, to where he, he became so sick that they had to get off the evangelistic field and had to go back home. And he just got sicker and sicker. But what really captivated me was when he said, in that condition, he said, I would not listen to anything but the word. He said, I kept having the word speaking into my, my life. He said, when I turned the television on, if I listened to singing, it was praise and worship songs. He said, if I listened to preaching, it was a building my faith, building my faith. He said, I shut the door to anything that was negative, anything that was negative. And God turned that situation around and completely healed him. You see, he had learned that in situations, times and that is beyond our control, to shut out all negativity, shut out all negativity and get the word in you, get the word in you, get that word in you. Matter of fact, I wrote something down here that I feel like is very important. Watch this. Stop holding back statements of faith in an attempt to protect God's reputation in case it doesn't work out. Stop holding back statements of faith in an attempt to protect God's reputation in case it doesn't work out. Don't second guess faith. Don't second guess faith. Get that word in you and learn, get in a habit of speaking out God's word, speaking out God's word, speaking out God's word. Now, I want to go back. Something that I found was very important concerning what we're talking about here today. This is what I studied. This is what I found. People with anxiety disorders feel the need to control everything in order to feel at peace. People with anxiety disorders feel the need to control everything in order to feel at peace. It is linked to a difficulty accepting uncertainty. Then it pointed, as I continued studying, it pointed to what was titled Hoarder's personality, a hoarder personality. Watch this, a persistent difficulty of not letting go with possessions due to a perceived need to save them. Parting with things for these people lead to distress. That's what it said. 14 million people deal with hoarding disorders. But watch this. This is what came to me. Did you know, are you aware that there are people that become so used to dealing with anxiety, so used to dealing with worry, 
To let go of it scares them. Peace creates fear in them. So they hoard anxiety. They hoard worry. They hoard apprehension. Shall I even say this? That in for kingdom citizens, kingdom citizens now, that ought to know better. It's like the same thing that Jesus, when he faced the religious people during his ministry, there were times when he said, you ought to know this, or haven't you heard, or you ought to be obeying this. But I dare say that there are kingdom citizens right now that have a spiritual hoarding personality. I say that with all due respect, but you have a spiritual hoarding personality. You have gotten so used to dealing with anxiety. You've gotten so used to dealing with apprehension and worry. To let it go scares you because it has become your blanket of security. There are people right now that always have to create a, a mess. They've always got to create a chaos because to have peace, they don't know how to handle that. It also is like somebody that has become institutionalized, that they have been in prison for so many years that when they finally get out, they don't know how to handle freedom. And so they will do certain things that will get them arrested again to be put back in prison because they have learned how to operate in an atmosphere of prison than when they are that to be free. They don't know how to be free. They don't know anything about that. They are fearful of freedom. There are, they are free of freedom. And there are Christian people that, as I've already stated several times, they have a spirit, a spiritual spirit of hoarding. They don't want to let go. But at the same time, let's flip the coin over. Remember that when God spoke to Israel, when he gave them the manna, he told Moses to tell them, you only take enough for each day. Do not take any more than what I have commanded you. But as we've already learned, some of them did not listen to Moses because trusting God was too risky. He was too unpredictable. So they hoarded. They got more. Here's the point. Am I talking to people here this morning that you, there's a part of you that says, I need to trust God. I, I need to speak his word. But yet there is a spirit of uncertainty that lingers within your spirit. There is a spirit of unpredictability. And so therefore you feel like I, I got to work this out myself. So I'm going to, I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to work it out myself. Because with God, it's, it, he's just too unpredictable. I don't see it. I don't see it happening. It is the same spirit of Sarah. God had already spoken to Abraham that he and Sarah were going to have a son. But 25 years later, it had still not happened. And so Sarah takes matters into her own hands because she feels like that God is not working fast enough. It's like, well, God, I waited on you for 25 years and still it has not. And, I'm, and here I am, 90 years old, and still nothing has happened. And so she, instead of letting go and trusting the Lord, she took matters into her own hands and you know the rest of the story. It created an a Ishmael, it brought division within the family. You see, when we started teaching here this morning, 
I read you scriptures after scriptures after scriptures about trusting in God. Once again, trusting in God. Psalms 20 and 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust the name of the Lord. Psalms 40 and 4, blessed or fortunate is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Jeremiah 17 and 7, but blessed or fortunate is the one who trusts in me alone. God will be his confidence. So there's other scriptures that I read, one right after another. And so the bottom line is, when we go back to Psalms, watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 46 and 10. I heard, this is what I was listening to a prophetic preacher by the name of Perry Stone, and they were in Israel. He had taken a group to Israel. And the night before, he had been talking to a Hebrew individual. And that scripture had come up. And he had looked at Perry and he said, that scripture says, be still. He said, do you really know what that means to us Hebrews? And so Perry just kind of gave him an idea of what he considered what that means. He said, let me give you some insight. That word steal there means loosen your grip. Loosen your grip. And God is saying, if you will loosen your grip and let me take control, you will see the miraculous. If you loosen your grip and let God take control, you will see what God does for you. That situation will work out. That situation will be, God will move on that situation. He will work it out or get it out of your life. He will turn the circumstance around. Yes, he will. Because remember what he said. He said, watch this. God is not a man. He doesn't lie. God isn't the son of man who wants to take back what he said or say something and not follow through or speak and not act on it. But we have got to come to a place to where we stop trying to take control. To where we stop saying, well, God isn't moving fast enough, so I'm going to take control. No, sir. We will get ourselves in trouble. We will create a spiritual Ishmael, and it will cause division. It will separate us, and we will miss the miraculous. And I don't know about you, but I want to see. I want to be an eyewitness. I've said this before, what Peter said. We were eyewitnesses of the power of God. We were eyewitnesses of the majesty of God. I want to be an eyewitness of the miraculous. I intend to be an eyewitness of the miraculous in these last days. So we've got to live before God open-handed. Open-handed. We've got to give it back to God. What does God's word tell us? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Don't lean towards your wisdom. Remember what he said. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And my ways are higher than your ways. And so therefore, God is trying to tell us, if you will loosen your grip and not try to just always be in control and try to work it out, I will move on your behalf. Do you hear what he's saying? I will move on your behalf. You will be delivered. You will be delivered. You will be delivered. You will experience the salvation of God. But he says, to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, with all of your feelings, with all of your heart, and lean not to thine understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He shall direct your path. You have got to live for God open-handed. Open-handed. Loosen your grip and let God take control. Quit hoarding anxiety. Quit hoarding uncertainty. Quit hoarding apprehension. Quit hoarding fear. Because 
God is not a risky God, as I've already stated. And Israel found that out, that you can trust God. You can trust him. The closer you get to God, the more you learn that you can trust him. He is, as he said, he's not a man that he should lie or say something and then take it back. God also said that he will, wherever he sends his word, it will be performed. It will be performed. You know how you send the word of God? You speak it out. You speak the word of God out. Release the word. Release the word. Release the word with faith. Release the word with confidence and loosen your grip. Take your hands off of it. Take your hands off of it and let God work it out. Let God do it. And that is the word of God for us here this morning. Beloved, God wants to do it for you. God wants to do it for you. You see, Every day, you are to get up in anticipation. Every day, you are to get up looking for the miraculous. Looking for the miraculous. Every day. And then that night, if for some reason, God did not see fit to release the miraculous, you don't get discouraged. You don't start having apprehension. But you still confess. You still confess. Hebrew says, hold fast. Well, here it is. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold strong to the confession of our faith, never wavering, since the one who promised it to us is faithful. I'll read that again. Let us hold strong to the confession of our faith, never wavering since the one who promised it to us is faithful. So I urge you, keep looking up. Keep your knees bent. This is a year of Gimel. And the quail has arrived. But at the same time, get your hands off of it and let God take complete control and you will be an eyewitness of the miraculous. And until next time, God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle, for that powerful word. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that you have everything under control, that when we relinquish power to you, when we surrender control to you, that you will work it out in ways that we never thought possible, in ways that we never imagined. I thank you, Jesus, for your powerful word today. God bless our apostle for delivering that word to us today in Jesus' name and help our hearts to fully receive it and to relinquish control and to live a life poured out in surrender to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you once again, Apostle, for that powerful word. Thank you, people of God, for tuning in today. That was so powerful and so pertinent for right now. You know, Apostle preached a message a long time ago called Standing at the Red Sea is a good place to be. And if you are faced with something impossible, just like the Israelites were when they stood at the Red Sea, it is a good place to be because if you're in an impossible situation, the only way to work it out is a miracle. And that's when God can show up. So I encourage you to save this video. There are three dots down at the bottom of the screen near the description of the video, and you can save this video. And I encourage you to do so and go back and listen to it whenever you're faced with an impossible situation, whenever you have an especially hard day, get this word repeated in your mind. Amen. Amen. Because God wants to have complete control in that situation. When we relinquish control, God can do amazing things. Thank you once again for joining us today. If you want to partner with this ministry and get involved in this ministry, one of the best ways to do that is to sow a seed. And you can follow any of the options down at the bottom of the screen, or you can text the word GIVE to the number one two one four. 
949-8858. And in doing so, you become a partner in this outreach ministry where we send this word, this now word, all around the world. And you help us to reach more people when you give. So I'm going to give you that opportunity one more time. You can follow any of the options at the bottom of the screen where you can save this number in your phone. one 214 949 8858 and that's going to take you to a secure site where you can give into this ministry and we thank you so much for doing that god said in his word seed time and harvest will endure so if you sow a seed you can guarantee that you will reap a harvest in jesus name thank you so much once again for joining us join us next sunday same time 10 a.m central standard time and we look forward to seeing you for another powerful now word from the Lord. Success to the kingdom of God and success to you. Thank you for joining us. God bless you.